வணக்கம் when we consider metacarpal fractures fractures of the neck are most common followed by fractures of the shaft but fractures of the metacarpal head are unique they are mostly intraarticular and if they are not treated right it will invariably result in stiffness and stiffness of the metacarpophalangeal joint as you know will mean loss of a great percentage of function of the finger so how do we manage these fractures of the metacarpal head they are mostly comminuted it's very difficult to fix them we can manage them conservatively but we need to get alignment of the articular surface little difficult isn't it we shall see how these metacarpal head fractures are managed when we consider finger metacarpal fractures the commonest are neck fractures and that too particularly the fracture of the fifth metacarpal shaft fractures come next and this involves mainly the second third and fourth metacarpals base fractures are a little less common and these usually affect the base of the first metacarpal the rarest are metacarpal head fractures though metacarpal head fractures are rare they are peculiar in that they are usually intraarticular fractures a study done in 1983 reported on 103 intraarticular metacarpal head fractures and it was found that the index metacarpal head fracture was most common presumably because it is a border digit and the carpometacarpal joint of the index finger is relatively immobile the clinical features of metacarpal head fractures are similar to the fractures of all metacarpals and we have seen these clinical features in a previous video you can click on the icon above to see that video extensor lag swelling over the finger and loss of knuckle prominence are the commonest clinical features as far as metacarpal head fractures are concerned when we clinically suspect a fracture of a metacarpal head the basic investigations we need to confirm the diagnosis are x-rays and this requires three views posterior anterior view lateral view and oblique view a specialized view called the brewerton view can be taken to visualize the volar side of the metacarpal heads this has been discussed in the video on the basics of metacarpal fractures which is shown in the icon above another specialized view is the skyline metacarpal view which visualizes the dorsal aspect of the metacarpal heads better if all these views are not able to give a conclusive evidence a ct scan is well advised the basic points we need to remember before looking at the treatment of metacarpal head fractures are that these fractures are mostly intraarticular and most of them need open reduction internal fixation unless undisplaced and the aim of treatment is to maintain the congruity of the articular surface the problems unique to the management of metacarpal head fractures are the size of the fragments and the importance of preserving blood supply of the fragments which usually comes from the attachment of the collateral ligaments if these are disturbed necrosis of the fragments are likely to occur and thirdly is the approach a midline extensor splitting approach is required and this may result in tendon adhesions post operatively there are different types of metacarpal head fractures and the treatment protocols are customized to the type of fracture keeping in mind that the common denominator is the intraarticular involvement even in these intraarticular fractures there are certain indications for fixation non comminuted fractures with more than 25% involvement of the articular surface need to be fixed and even comminuted fractures 
with more than 1 mm step off requires fixation. Armed with this knowledge about the basics of metacarpal head fracture management, let us now see the different types of fractures of the metacarpal head that can occur. Epiphyseal fractures and most of them are non-displaced Salter Harris type 3, ligamentous avulsion fractures, osteochondral slices, three-part fractures occurring in different planes that is sagittal plane, coronal plane or the axial planes, fractures with segmental bone loss and finally comminuted fractures. Let us first consider the epiphyseal injury involving the metacarpal head. When managing such injuries, we need to remember that we should avoid further damage to the growing epiphysis and after the management, we need to repair the joint capsule and finally, a single screw fixation is ideal for the management of such epiphyseal injuries. Ligament avulsion fractures refer to fractures of the bone that are attached to the strong collateral ligaments. Since these fractures are usually displaced, they can be satisfactorily managed by open reduction and internal fixation. But since the pull of the collateral ligament is still there, these fractures are prone to symptomatic non-union. Hence, the ideal management of such ligament avulsion fractures would be internal fixation of these displaced fractures using a single lag screw through a dorsal approach. Osteochondral slices are also types of fractures where a slice of the bone along with the part of the articular cartilage is separated. Small osteochondral fractures may be treated conservatively, but these slices should not be discarded primarily and they should not be fixed individually with hardware. It is safer to trap them in place by larger fragments. However, the larger osteochondral fractures can be satisfactorily managed by open reduction and internal fixation. A very unique type of fracture of the metacarpal head is the three-part fracture which can occur in the coronal, sagittal and axial planes. These are best managed by open reduction and internal fixation which can be done with Kirschner wires, interfragmentary screws or headless compression screws. We shall see the technique of fixation later on in this video. The K wires can be used for the very small segments and in such situations it is ideal to use threaded K wires which are cut flush. To avoid devascularizing the articular fragments, it is important to retain the soft tissue attachments. Sometimes we can have a metacarpal head fracture with segmental bone loss. In these conditions, it is important to replace the bone loss with osteochondral autografts which can be taken from the metatarsal bones. Among the metacarpal head fractures, comminuted fractures are quite common and when it occurs, it is one of the most difficult fractures to treat. That is because in addition to having the articular involvement, soft tissue injuries and metaphyseal impaction or bone loss can be associated. If the fractures are impacted, the articular surface is reduced and the bony defect under the fragments is filled with bone graft from the distal radius. Screw fixation can then be performed. But depending on the severity of the comminution that occurs in the metacarpal head, this ideal management may not be possible all the time. However, there are some alternative methods of management that can be done and the basic principle of the alternative methods of management is to provide traction to maintain the joint space to allow healing of the articular surface so that the full range of movements of the metacarpophalangeal joint can be achieved. The first alternative is just immobilization with the POP slab. This is ideal for closed comminuted fractures and it entails immobilization in a POP for just two weeks followed by aggressive therapy to get back painless range of motion. 
This example shows a fracture of the metacarpal head managed conservatively with the POP slab and the resulting range of movements. The next alternative is the use of skeletal traction with external fixator. This can be done if it is associated with base of the proximal phalanx fractures or with skin loss. The third alternative is the use of a technique called Tupper Arthroplasty described by Jack Tupper in 1989. By this technique, for open comminuted head fractures with bone loss, the volar plate can be used to be interposed between the base of the proximal phalanx and head of the injured metacarpal. This will ensure an acceptable range of movements of the metacarpophalangeal joint without causing ankylosis. The next alternative that can be used is described as the masculine technique where the head of the metacarpal is severely damaged. To replace the damaged and lost portion of the metacarpal head, a temporary cement spacer is used and after it is consolidated, the spacer is removed carefully, retaining the membrane that has formed around the spacer and this cavity is filled with autogenous bone graft. When the bone graft is consolidated, metacarpophalangeal joint fusion can be done or a volar plate arthroplasty can be done. If all these alternatives cannot be done or have been done and have failed, there is still the alternative of replacement arthroplasty though it is not ideal since there is going to be a lot of soft tissue involvement also. In the most extreme cases, a primary arthrodesis can also be done. When we consider the complications of the management of metacarpal head fractures, the most important is stiffness of the metacarpophalangeal joint. This stiffness may be due to extensor tendon additions, collateral ligament or dorsal capsular contracture, or articular incongruity. The other important complication is avascular necrosis of the fragment of the metacarpal head and this usually involves the index and middle fingers. Now let us see some of the important steps involved in screw fixation of metacarpal head fractures. Usually a dorsal approach to the metacarpophalangeal joint is used after splitting the extensor tendon. Pointed forceps are used for reducing the fractured fragments to avoid, to avoid further injury. Once the fractures are reduced, small K-wires can be used for preliminary fixation. If the bony fragments are sufficiently large, anti-grade fixation can be done. That is, screws can be inserted from proximal into the fragments. But we must take care that we do not perforate the articular cartilage. Drilling must be done at low speed and without exerting pressure to avoid thermal damage and mechanical damage. And since the opposite cortex is not engaged, they are position screws which are threaded throughout. But if the fragments are small, they can still be fixed with screws but retrograde fixation needs to be done. That is, the screws are inserted through the articular cartilage. It is important that the heads of these screws must be buried under the cartilage. This can be done by countersinking the articular cartilage when standard screws are used. By this technique, the head of the screw is completely buried within the cartilage and does not impinge on the movements of the metacarpophalangeal joint. But we need to remember that this countersinking should not injure the thin subchondral cortex. To avoid this countersinking, if the fragment is sufficiently thick, small headless screws can be used. Even after screw fixation, it is ideal to immobilize at least for 10 days to 2 weeks, following which therapy can be started. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. Please do click on the shown links to see more about the basics of fracture management that is fracture healing and the anatomy of the bone. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest 
in learning hand surgery, plastic surgery and trauma surgery. Vanakkam.